Procedural abstraction is the process of creating procedures that can be used without needing to know the inner workings of the code. For example, if you write a procedure called square the num, you might call that function like this. Square the num 3, save the results of that in an x variable. So x now holds the value 9. The function squared the number. How did it do this? What exactly did the code say? We don't know and it doesn't really matter. Sometimes a procedure does its job and we don't need to know exactly how. For example, do you know all of the code within all of the built-in procedures like length? No, but we know that if we use length list, it will calculate the length of list. Understanding the inner workings of the procedure is not required. Procedural abstraction allows for a large problem to be solved by writing procedures for smaller problems and then calling them all. For example, here's what some AP pseudocode might look like for a complicated program. X is set to hello world, then we're going to reverse string, add exclamation mark, erase first car, display X. When this program is executed, it displays this to the screen. We used three procedures to do all of the work, but you don't actually see the code for any of it. If all of the code was written out, it would be way too long to even show on this slide. Modularity is when a program is divided up into smaller, more manageable pieces. Let's say you want the user to input a number, and then you want to multiply it by a different number, and then add another number to it. You might have code that looks like this x input, where the user can enter, let's say, 3, then we're going to save x times 4 into x, then we're going to save x plus 5 into x, display x. If the user entered a 3, this code will display 17. This is simple enough. However, what if we want to change the 4 to a 6, and also change the 5 to a 2? What if we want to keep changing the numbers? Let's rewrite this as a procedure that accepts arguments then it will be more useful. All right, now we have procedure do math that accepts three arguments, x, y, and z. Let's call the procedure several times with different numbers. So now we can send 4, 1, and 2, 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 1, and these will all display different results. We could have written all of the code out three times with different numbers each time but it would have been very long and confusing. By using parameters, we generalize the functionality and we didn't need to duplicate any code. We can call this procedure with a wide range of arguments. This also helps increase code readability. Let's say that as a coder, you wrote a procedure that adds three numbers together. And let's also say there are already a lot of users who use your procedure in their programs. However, you've learned a new way to write the procedure that will be faster and more efficient, and you want to change it. That's fine. Procedural abstraction allows a programmer to modify procedures, and as long as the results are the same, other people who use the code don't even need to know about the changes. As you can see below, the code on the right is more elegant, and the return value will be the same, but the code will run faster. You can see how useful this would be in much larger procedures. Programming libraries contain pre-written code in the form of global variables and procedures that are available to the programmer. Oftentimes, libraries may need to be imported into a program before using any procedures from the library, but the small addition of an import statement in a program can save the programmer a great amount of time and effort. Using libraries can greatly simplify writing computer programs. Commonly used libraries include a math library, a random library, a string library, and many more. The math library, for example, provides procedures that quickly enable a programmer to find the square root or raise a value to the power of an exponent. An application programming interface, or API, acts as an intermediary between a program and another piece of software. The API then allows communication between the two. The communication is established between the two by building protocols 
and outlining directions for how communication should occur. An API specification is an outline on how the procedures in a library behave and can be used. When using a library or an API, always read the documentation to determine how these tools can be used.